Good morning, welcome to the Killian Family Homestead. Uh, as you can see, today we're going to be doing some working works with our bees. Uh, happy Saturday, it is June 6th. Purpose of this video, I have a few objectives, I'd like to go over them first. First objective, two out of our three hives are new this year, and so it's important to feed them. In the early spring, I do a one-to-one -one ratio, sugar to water volume-wise mixture, and I put it within the feeders. I'm going to be opening up each one of our hives. We, like I said, we have three. This was our original hive. We call it hive number one. This is hive number two and hive number three. Hive number two was a split off of this one. This one, we took the queen, the hopefully the old queen. We didn't mark her last year. We should have, but we believe it was the old queen. We put the old queen over here with some frames of brood, pollen, and nectar so that she could kickstart. But by, by splitting, all of her foragers that we put over here would just fly away and come back once they were done foraging and back into the original hive. So I've got to check and see if she is laying eggs, if, if, and, and if those bees right there at the front entrance are truly foragers, or if they're robbing the honey out of this one from the other hives. That's important. Number two, I've got to make sure that hive number two actually hatched out a queen because once you take the queen out of the original and put it over here, they need to make their own queen. And that is why I left larvae and eggs within this first one. So the original bees left behind would then rear up a, a swarm cell and hatch out a queen. This other one over here, I believe it's doing really well. That's a package set of bees that we bought from a local breeder here. So I'm gonna check each one of them and I'll bring you along with me. First one I'm going to check is hive number two and feed it. As you can see, this is hive number two, and the cluster of bees is right here. I'm hoping that the queen is still here, obviously, and number two, that the queen is laying within the correct brood cells. Here is the brood chamber right here, or the brood nest, and I'm going to go ahead and open. I'm going to start right here and just go ahead and take the feeder out. That's going to give me some enough room to move some of these frames aside and start looking at them. Find the queen, make sure that I see eggs being laid and the brood cycles happening. Okay, let me recap what I found and what I've done here. So as you can see on the outside, I added another uh, full box on top because all of the frames were built out down below. I found, so the first, first frame starting closest to me out was the feeder. I've taken the feeder out and I've put it on the top. And then I found four frames of full honey. Then I've done the fifth frame, I found the, the start of the brood nest. And in that I found good size uh, uncapped brood. The next side of it was capped brood with newer brood, uh, little larvae. Then I found more um, brood, brood, brood and a lot of pollen stores and a rainbow horseshoe shape around the brood nest and a lot of nectar as well. Um, because it was so full, I felt the need to add this another uh, full-size box on top. It's a 10 frame uh, Langstroth hive box. Put that on there instead of the super. Now they're gonna be encouraged to grow out. Another thing that I did was use a checkerboard um, tactic. So there were, I took empty, uh, foundation frames that were not drawn out and I put I replaced two of them for the empty space that I left by taking out the feeder and um, by checkerboarding it what meaning that there was a, a empty foundation then a drawn out foundation uh, drawn out comb and then an empty foundation and a drawn out comb that's going to incentivize them to build out and draw out the um, the foundation so now they've got two just straight foundation frames down here that are empty that they can build into so they don't feel too crowded and need to swarm. Uh, in addition to that, I found seven queen cups. Queen cups do not mean that your hive is about ready to swarm or anything. It simply means they have them on reserve just in case they need them. And there's, and interesting enough, there's about one or two on each side of the um, the brood nest. So they're just they're doing a good job. They're, they're typical patterns. Uh, the honeycomb looks clean and, and good, and it's not being robbed. So this split right here, big success. I didn't actually find the queen, but I saw all signs that the queen is doing precisely what she needs to do.
Let me show you the way I enter a hive. I'm going to do hive number one now, or original hive. Get the smoke going. Okay. A couple of puffs inside. That's more than a couple, I know. That just lets them know, hey, I'm coming. The next thing I do, and sorry, someday I'll get a hands-free thing. I lift this lid, and I lift the inner cover, right there, the inner cover, and I give another couple of puffs, and then I close it, and I wait for about 35 to 45 seconds, then I enter. Gives them a heads up. One interesting characteristic or action you'll see from the bees when you smoke them is a number of them will put their heads inside the honeycomb and eat away at the honey, uh, the nectar, rather. What they're trying to do is get their honey bellies full in anticipation of a forest fire and needing to flee, swarm the hive and go start another hive. They need their honey bellies full to be able to, to do that. So it's an interesting deal that you learn as you go throughout beekeeping. Okay, the objective of hive number one review is remember this was a queenless hive once we made the split. I've got it. I want to specifically see the queen to make sure I feel okay. If I don't find the queen, then, and, and I understand that she's a new queen, last time I checked this about 14 days ago, I could not find the queen anywhere, but the hive was so calm that it led me to believe that the virgin queen was actually on her honeymoon flight and was going to be bred and come back, and they were just waiting for their for their queen. So I'm just going to see if I can find all the signs of a queen having been hatched and come back bred. The very first thing I see when I've taken off the first uh, box, which had a queen excluder right here so the queen couldn't go up, is that I think the cluster, the brood nest, has migrated up top here. This, this thing is really full of bees, which is excellent, excellent, excellent. And there's the feeder, obviously. I'll be taking that feeder off because I don't know if this hive needs it anymore. All right, totally wrong. I, I've inspected every single one of these. And again, one of my videos down the road will show each and every frame and, and, and educate on the actual types of comb that you see. But this, this top rock box right here is exciting, both exciting and disappointing a little bit. I was hoping that they would be migrating up, but a traditional sign of a hive that's been split away this one has all the foragers and it becomes honey bound, meaning that all the foragers are just jam packing it full of honey, which is awesome and it's a tactic to do that. Every single one of these frames full of honey. Okay, bottom box of hive number one. Here is where the cluster is. As you can see, I put three new frames. Hopefully they've drawn that out. And I really hope that they haven't honey bound the bottom side, kicking the queen out effectively. What I mean by that is she had no place to, to lay her eggs because the forgers are coming in and just jam packing it full of nectar and pollen. So that's my objective is to see this, including to find the queen and to make sure that she is showing signs of laying, that she's been bred, if there is a queen. Okay, I closed up the hive really quickly. And the one, two, three, four, Four. On F4, frame number four, the brood nest, I found tons of new brood. Uh, just like I expected, none of them were capped because they haven't had any time to cap it. This queen was mated, she came back, and she is laying the dickens out of that bottom box. She's also huge. She's a lot bigger than the other queens that I have, and I'm super excited about that. So, brood box consists, this is an eight frame Langstroth hive. Brood box consists of um, frame F4, F5, F6, 7, and 8. I didn't even check because I stopped right there. Um, then the first few frames, um, like I expected, tons of pollen, just tons of pollen, but also being prepped for. Ooh, let's show you this here. Oh, I, I might have missed it. But there was some robbing that was trying to be done, and uh, the guard bees kicked them out. This was the bee right there that was trying to rob here. To see if it tries to go back. But you saw a gang up mentality where they, if they don't have the right pheromone, they get kicked out real fast. It's quite interesting. Anyways, huge success on this split. Queen over on hive number two, queen over on hive number one. They hatched out their own queen. I left two swarm cells or queen cells that were capped, and she must have hatched out, destroyed the other one, went and got mated, came back, and now she's ripping and roaring. 
Okay, now I migrate over to hive number three here. This one is a nuke hive that we purchased from a local breeder and uh, installed it. And as you can see, they, those bees are coming and going. Let's see if we can see any that are fanning or see see some of those near the entrance they stick their abdomens up in the air and they they kind of fan a little bit which means they're scenting the pheromone up so that the right bees know where to come home just looking around look closely to see if you see any that come in with full pollen baskets on their legs I did this earlier in the day when the foragers would be out and doing their business but before it got too hot, today is going to be a really warm one. It could be that they're all out gathering. I believe the, bee, the foragers come back to the hive in between 8 to 10 times a day with full pollen baskets. They walk up to the right place and then they deposit those pollen baskets, pollen into the cell and then they go back out. Oh, I just saw one yellow pollen. We have tons of flowers around us, and so there's a lot of clover, as you can see. There's one bee right there. This whole pasture is specifically kept clover. Fortunately, the sheep don't eat all of it. So, on hive, on hive number three, I don't. Uh, have an objective where I have to find the queen and see signs of the queen. I'm curious and so I'm going to do as minimal as possible and satisfy my curiosity. But I know last time I checked and saw her, it's been 14 days and she is doing really well. I just need to see if there's any management of the frames to help because I have a, a pretty new apiary. I have a lot of frames that haven't been built out yet so my objective is to see if I can incentivize building out of, of frames in a rapid succession, a rapid manner. Okay, wrapping it up. As you can see, it's hot already. Um, boy, did a lot of stuff. Big, big success. The past 14 days has proven to be, I mean, just exactly what we wanted. I cannot get over the size of that queen in hive number one. That was queenless. That hatched out their own queen. She went, got mated, and there was a variety of um, there was nothing that was capped because she hasn't had time to do that or for the worker bees to, to cap out the brood yet. The brood was in the larva stage to the egg stage to, um, and everything in between. So uh, huge success in the split. Both, all three hives are doing excellent. The uh, third hive I had to add another box on top of it. Didn't find the queen because I didn't need to disturb the hive. I just I knew that she existed and I could, I could tell real fast that she had continued to lay beautiful patterns uh, on the honeycomb, uh, pollen rings accompanied by nectar and honey stores in the far corners, uh, leaving the middle of the frame for the queen to lay her eggs. Um, she had plenty of places to lay. I was also pleasantly surprised in hive number one that the queen would have a lot of places to lay because the worker bees cleaned out a lot of the pollen stores and nectar stores that the forages were erroneously putting into certain parts of the of uh, the brood nest and uh, then they started jam packing the second box full of honey. I mean every frame all the way full, a lot of it capped, some of it in the nectar stage that needs to be dehydrated. Um, the next couple days are going to be super hot so um, one thing I just remembered I need to do is, is make sure I prop up the little bit, little, lid a little bit to vent it out properly. But overall, 10 days from now or so, I'll check them again. Thanks. Take care.